thank you all for being here. Um, I'm Orleans Parish Sheriff Susan Hudson. I'm joined here today by our command staff and leaders from the city as well. We have uh, Chief John Thomas, um, Criminal Justice Commissioner Tanisha Stevens, and we're going to hear also from our Chief of Corrections, Jay Mallett, and our uh, Incident Commander, Major Silas Phipps, as well here today. But just want our community to know what's going on. Um, as we monitor the path of Storm Francine, the Orleans Parish Sheriff's Office is fully prepared to ensure the safety of our city and the residents in our custody with the support of an amazing and dedicated and hardworking staff. We have a comprehensive emergency uh, deployment plan in place and we plan to reassure the public right now that every precaution is being taken to secure not just our facilities, but all of our folks. We have successfully evacuated 154 residents for rehousing at around 7 this morning. As you can see, some folks look a little tired. They were up early this morning uh, moving folks. We began moving residents out of the temporary detention center, which is near Norman Francis, down Perdido, and we moved them to a secure location. Uh, the Department of Corrections will be providing proper housing, bedding, and food for the residents for the duration of their stay. DOC is also providing housing for security and medical staff that had to be evacuated as well with the residents. Uh, it was a big operation to move them there. We're going to talk a little bit more about the numbers and about what we had to do to get them there, but we have been in constant communication with our partners at DOC and truly appreciate how responsive they have been to our needs. In line with our security plan, all residents currently housed in the Orleans Justice Center will shelter in place inside the facility. All essential personnel, and that includes all sworn security staff, have been placed on modified level two alert as we increase staffing and adjust schedules to ensure sufficient staffing inside the jail. We are also going to talk about uh, the work our deputies will be doing out in the streets. We also have ample food and water on hand to feed the residents and staff during the duration of this weather event, this major weather event. In the event that power is lost while residents are sheltering in place, we have diesel and gas uh, power generators which will be activated to restore power to the OJC and the kitchen warehouse where all of our meals are prepared. Uh, we worked closely with the courts to release some low-level offenders before an emergency declaration was issued. Um, that's good coordination. Certain individuals which are charged with offenses such as fines and fees and misdemeanors, pretrial misdemeanor offenses, as well as contempt of court were released pursuant to court order. Those facing charges related to domestic violence and weapons are excluded from that order and have not been released. As always, the safety and well-being of all individuals under our care remains our top priority. We are committed to ensuring that the OPSO is prepared to respond effectively to Francine and any other future storms, and we want our community to know that. We know that the people inside of this jail are first and foremost citizens of the city, and we want to assure their families that the men and women in our custody, uh, that we are taking good care of them, and we're taking every precaution to make sure that their needs are met during this disruptive time period. And this is no small undertaking. Uh, moving this many people with their diverse needs out of harm's way and our staff, which includes maintenance, transportation, uh, the, the security staff at OJC, TDC, and TMH, um, as they always have do, have gone above and beyond to make sure that we are ready and that we are safe. And I want to give a big thank you to the men and women of this department. They always punch above their weight. Um, we also want you to know that we still have duties to take care of. So if anybody's taken into custody, we'll handle that. And our victims reparation unit is still operating. In fact, we've heard some, from some victims during this time period. Uh, we are operating to ensure that they are able to still get services if they need them. And we ask that you help us get that in for contact information out there. Our crime victims reparation unit number is 504-827-6754. And they could also call 504-202-9229. And we'll provide that information offline as well. So we are continuing to screen victims, help them, 
and get them to resources. This information is also available on our website, opso.gov, and also on our social media. So um, that's kind of the basics of it, but I also want to ask Major Silas Phipps, who is our over our hurricane implementation plan and our incident commander to come uh, forward and talk about logistics, about how we're going to assist with patrols in the district. Uh, and after that, we'll have Chief uh, Jay Mallett come up and talk about our custodial functions. Uh, Major Phipps. Thank you, Sheriff. As the Sheriff said, first I'd like to thank the men and women of the Orleans Parish Sheriff's Office who went above and beyond as they normally do uh, to assist us very early this morning in getting those residents that are that were in our custody that needed to be moved uh, ready to be moved and moved out of our facility. Um, a couple of things <clears throat> I'd like to add. So we began monitoring uh, the storm last week up until the weekend. I uh, made the decision on yesterday to activate our emergency operations plan and at that moment we decided that we were going to uh, evacuate the temporary detention center in accordance with our plan. Um, and we, we move forward with that. Uh, this morning we put all of our staff on uh, double shifts. Essentially we have four squads. The, uh, four, all four of those squads were combined with two day shifts, two night shifts, so that we have sufficient staffing inside the facility. Um, the sheriff mentioned we did move 154 residents. Um, the Department of Corrections will house them, feed them, as well as our staff and our medical staff that assisted us who are also on site with the residents that are at the, the Department of Corrections. As the sheriff mentioned, we will be providing uh, some additional support to the city. Uh, we have approximately 45 deputies who uh, are normally assigned to various areas outside of jail functions in the department. And beginning tomorrow at 6.30 a.m., they will be providing supplemental coverage to the eight uh, New Orleans police districts within the city of New Orleans. Uh, so with that, I think I don't think I have anything else. I'll answer questions later. Okay. And we're going to have Chief of Corrections, Jay Mallett, step up. Thank you, Sheriff. Uh, operationally, um, OPSO has done a phenomenal job of implementing the hurricane plan the Sheriff has talked about. Uh, I've been here about 45 days, and it's refreshing to see uh, the team, uh, the total organization, come together and pull this off. Um, we are currently at about 95 percent uh, staffed, which is excellent for a jail of this size. Um, the 5 percent that we have uh, deployed to an, um, where the inmates have been sent to are doing a wonderful job. Like the sheriff said, we don't have any hiccups. Uh, we're, we're operational um, and we're prepared to provide public safety and maintain custody and care of the facility. Thank you, Chief. Um, we, w we also want to note that the DOC is also making sure that those who have been evacuated can also stay in touch with their families. Um, I want to thank the mayor of the city and, and the, the entire leadership team of the city for their leadership on this. We were at the event yesterday. We all went through our, what we're doing. Uh, nobody was nervous. Nobody was uh, shaken or leg shaken, anything like that. It was uh, everybody was confident, had plans, and was ready to move forward. We're excited to be a part of that. Um, we were glad to have Chief Thomas and Commissioner Stevens here. Um, would you, is there anything either one of you would like to say at this event? Chief? I just want to thank Sheriff Hudson for being a partner in this uh, endeavor. As a city, Director of Public Safety, Fire, EMS, Police, the Sheriff's Office, we all work hand in hand. And like she said, she attended the um, press briefing we had yesterday. And we all realized we have to keep the city safe and she is reaching out to the city, and we're working together as one, as one law enforcement community, as one public safety team, assisting us on the city. And we are glad that she had taken on this responsibility and given us some of the sheriff deputies to assist with us. And Chief uh, Sheriff Hudson, we appreciate that dearly, that we're working together as one team. And we, uh, as Director of Public Safety, I truly appreciate that, as well as the uh, as representative of the mayor of the city of New Orleans. We all appreciate her responsibility in taking on this task to assist the uh, public safety team. Thank you very much, Sheriff. Thank you. Okay. Um, um, so, you know, we'll, we'll be answering questions in just a minute, but we just want our community to know that we're ready. This is no small undertaking, but we've got it moving. Our team knows their assignments. We have the plan in place. 
Uh, if you look around this room, you see the dedicated men and women of this department. That's why I fight so hard for them, for them to have the resources that they need to do their job, to feed their families, and to take care of this city. So uh, I'm proud to be their sheriff, uh, and we're glad to be here when our city needs us. And if you have any questions, we'd be glad to answer them. Yeah, we'll get you um, the exact numbers. We'll get it written for you and provide those for you. Um, so we, again, but just to remind you that anybody released pursuant to a court order, there will be an order in place which will show um, the number that were released. So we'll get you those exact figures. Thank you, Sheriff. Mm -hmm. so, I know, uh, Sheriff, I know there have been some concerns about the jail being overpopulated. Does this, releasing those low-level offenders, does this help with that population? Or what are we saying now? Do you have like a figure of how many people are currently at OJC? Yeah, there's about 1,200 people still in OJC, so uh, it's still pretty full. But um, being able to release folks does help us. It allows us to move our men and women power around and also to be able to deploy deputies into the city. So it's a big help to us, and we, we are grateful for uh, the courts for helping us with that. Okay. Do you still have 17-year-olds in custody, and what outreach do you make to parents? Uh, we do still have 17-year-olds in custody. They are still um, secured here on the premises, and they do have access to the same uh, phone system and communication system as they always do. Nothing's changed for them. But have any jail staff made specific outreach to keep I'll double check on that, but we have a dedicated team just to them, and also our grievance unit under the leadership of Lieutenant Tanji Barrett. Co um, uh, stays in contact with family members. So we'll be able to provide you information about who we reached out to and not. And how many kids is that? It's less than 20, maybe 17, 16, 17. Thanks. Oh. Um, so obviously a lot can happen with the storm. We're still, everyone is still watching it. Right now it's looking like possibly when it makes landfall for category one, category two. What is the threshold, or do you guys have a threshold to say let's employ these? Is it any time there's a hurricane? Can you talk a little bit about that? I'm sorry, is question, what was the question? Um, just, is there a threshold where you employ these um, strategies? Um, is it just like any time there's any type of hurricane, is it a certain category of a hurricane? Yeah, and um, I'm going to ask Major Phipps to come up. He's our, our plan uh, implementer. <laughs> So normally, um, for any name storm, we evacuate the temporary detention center. Uh, however, our, poly our, our practice is that for category two or greater, we would do an entire facility evacuation. However, given the short time frame that we have with this, we made the decision to go ahead and shelter in place. We just did not have the time available to evacuate 1,400 people. And Chair Hudson talked, um, really, she mentioned that it's just a big undertaking. Can you talk a little bit more about that and what that, that really so I'll tell you, within 24 hours, we were able to get our entire staff uh, at work, uh, cooking on all cylinders and uh, moving forward, understanding where we needed them. Our investigative services bureau and our, all of our ancillary units, uh, court services, civil district court, all provided the additional resources we needed to actually get residents searched, get them onto buses fed, get their property moved, get medical staff all in a convoy to the Department of Corrections. So, uh, we, we had a short time to put it together, but we, our planning began in early March. As we know, hurricane season comes at the same time every year. So to wait till the last minute is just asinine. Yeah, and I would just mention also that um, we're one of the uh, major, um, we provide major medical and mental health care in this facility. So that includes medications, uh, treatment plans, personnel. We had a all those who helped this morning, can you just raise your hand, get everybody moved? It was a lot. We had trucks with clothing and medication and equipment. It's a, it's a big undertaking. 